This is CBS 2 News at 11. Right now at 11, the first delivery of food and water arrives in Gaza. The humanitarian aid finally trickling in as Israel steps up its airstrikes. I don't really think. I, uh, I hardly function. A New York family in anguish tonight over their loved ones, including two children held hostage by Hamas. The message they're sending. Plus, a mudslide leaves a home on the edge of a cliff and disrupts train service. And today's blustery winds are now setting us up for some of the coldest air of the season. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jessica Moore. We begin with the war between Israel and Hamas tonight. Growing expectations of an Israeli ground offensive into Gaza. Today, the first trucks of humanitarian aid finally arrived in Gaza, but officials warn the supplies aren't nearly enough to relieve the massive humanitarian crisis. CBS 2's Tina Kraus has the latest from Tel Aviv. 20 trucks bringing a small amount of desperately needed food, water and medicine arrived in Gaza after the border crossing with Egypt opened on Saturday. It was the first delivery to the devastated Palestinian territory since Israel sealed it off after Hamas's deadly rampage in southern Israel two weeks ago. Anywhere else attacking civilian infrastructure and deliberately starving an entire population of food, water, electricity, and basic necessities would be condemned. At the Cairo Summit for Peace, Jordan's King Abdullah II slammed the international community's slow response. More than 200 trucks carrying several tons of essential supplies have been waiting at the border for days, but aid workers say the delivery won't stave off a humanitarian crisis. Late Friday, Hamas released American hostage Judith Renan and her 17-year-old daughter Natalie. President Biden spoke to them after they were freed. Just to let it rain and get you out. We've been working on it a long time. We're going we're to get them all out, God willing. A military spokesman says Israel is increasing airstrikes on Gaza as it prepares for the next stage of its war on Hamas. It is our intention to dismantle Hamas from its military capabilities so that the security situation in Israel will be fundamentally different. It is also our intention to bring back the 210 and perhaps more hostages that we have there, every last one of them. Israel says it does not plan to take long-term control over the small, densely populated Gaza Strip. Tina Kraus, CBS News, Tel Aviv. A Long Island couple is desperately awaiting word on their niece and her three children who were all kidnapped by Hamas during the attack in Israel. CBS 2's Alicia Reed sat down with them tonight in Comac. <laughs> Just one day before Hamas attacked Israel, Ofri Brodach celebrated her 10th birthday with family. Hours later, she along with her mother Hagar and two younger brothers were taken hostage from their home, which was right on the border of Gaza. Geula Strauss is Hagar's aunt. My brother called and he said that two people told them that they saw that they've been taken and Others said there's no blood in the house, so they're somewhere alive. At the time, Hagar Brodich's husband had left to help protect their kibbutz, their community. He's now doing everything he can to get his wife and children home. He really inspires everybody because there's no quit in that guy. He's just pushing his, his almighty cause. There is no cause higher than your wife and children. Geula Strauss and her husband, Iran, live on Long Island, but the majority of their family is in Israel. They've been in constant contact since October 7th when the war broke out. I don't really think. I, uh, I hardly function. Sleepless nights, extreme tension, um, inability to concentrate. My wife is on edge all the time, so I have to support her. While dealing with the stress of the hostage situation, Brodich's father and her siblings left their homes in Israel. They moved out of the kibbutz, and my other niece, who's her sister, moved to the family will be together in a safer place. They, it was unsafe to leave civilians in the area, so they just told everybody to evacuate, and, um, you know, everybody evacuated. I just want all these people to come home. The Strauss family says moments before their niece and her children were taken hostage, she took in another child whose mother had just been killed by Hamas. 
Alicia Reed, CBS 2 News. <sighs> A large demonstration was held today in Brooklyn demanding a ceasefire and an improvement of human rights conditions in Gaza. The crowd marched along Fifth Avenue in Bay Ridge this afternoon. The Palestinian-led organization Within Our Lifetime organized what it called a National Day of Action for Gaza. Of course, we support humanitarian aid going into Palestine. We demand an end to the bombing immediately. People should be able to live freely with water and uh, the right humanitarian aid that they need for their daily lives. Some in attendance also called for the release of the hostages being held by Hamas. Police say a number of people were taken into custody. No word yet on the charges. And the NYPD now confirms 139 people were arrested last night for disorderly conduct during a march supporting Palestinians. The rally started at Bryan Park. All of the arrests occurred outside the Fifth Avenue office of Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Stay with CBS2 for the latest developments out of Israel and Gaza. You can also find updates anytime on our website, cbsnewyork.com. Now to our first alert forecast. Temperatures are dropping. You can really feel it outside and we are getting ready for some of the coldest air of the season. Here's a look at the windy conditions tonight at 57th Street and 11th Avenue on the west side. Some areas dealing with gusts up to 40 miles an hour. Meteorologist John Elliott joining us tonight with a look at our forecast. John. You really can feel it. I mean, there's a big change underway right now. So currently in the city, we have winds at 16 and a cool temperature of 58 but gusts to 26, so gusts as high as 30 plus for parts of the Hudson Valley, Nassau, Suffolk around 34 gusts. Jessica's right, we peaked at 40 at Newark, so I know it's a little bumpy for some of the big planes in and out, and wind will still be an issue tomorrow. Worst of the rain is over, but wow, since Friday, over two and a half inches of rain in the area. The good news is, and this is good news as the drama continues, the odds for rain is gonna go down, but so will the temperatures before they bounce back. A very interesting seven day forecast coming up in a bit right now, though, right back to Jesse. All right. Thank you, John. A massive tree went down in Queens today during the rain and powerful winds. This happened on Grovesner Road near 116th Street in Kew Gardens. You see there the tree toppled over onto an SUV. A man whose family owns that vehicle says he was shocked by what he found. I just came to get my car and I'm like, oh, that car looks really familiar. Came close, saw his ID. I'm like, oh, my God, no one was in it. That's that's a good thing. He's calm. I mean, like it is what it is, I and mean, we can't do anything at the moment. No one was injured. It appears the SUV was the only vehicle that was damaged. Today's rain triggered a mudslide that spilled over onto the train tracks in Westchester County. It's causing major disruptions to Metro North and Amtrak service that we're told could linger into Monday. As CBS 2's Natalie Dudridge reports, the mudslide is also impacting homes. A major mudslide in Scarborough, the cliffside collapsing dangerously close to a home and leaving a crack right through the backyard. The neighborhood now blocked off by first responders. Authorities say no injuries were reported and no people were left stranded, but the mudslide dumped soil, rocks and debris onto the train tracks below, disrupting train service to Metro North. I'm going to have to get off in Terrytown and call an Uber. It'll probably be an extra 80 to 100 bucks in 90, min in 90 minutes. I'm going to take it to Portland and then I'm going to transfer it to a bus and get to Peekskill somehow. Service on the Hudson Line between Croton Harmon and Terrytown is now partially suspended. Limited shuttle service is being provided between those stations, but transit officials are strongly advising to use Beeline buses to and from the Harlem line instead. Probably take them another hour. We don't know what time we'll get home. This passenger was in town for a special occasion. It was my birthday. Well, it is my birthday. Oh, my birthday. Okay. So we took a dance class. The delay just icing on the cake. Here's what it is. Roll it with the flow. Okay. Meanwhile, a statement on Amtrak's website says, due to a track outage issue, all Amtrak service operating between Albany and New York has been canceled for the remainder of the day on Saturday, October 21st. No substitute transportation is currently available. And this afternoon, Governor Hochul tweeted that their top priority is to get service restored as soon as possible so that Monday morning's commute gets back to normal. In Grand Central Terminal, Natalie Dudridge, CBS 2 News. And stay with CBS 2 for your first First alert forecast as you wake up tomorrow morning. Watch CBS 2 News beginning at 6 a.m.
New tonight, police are searching for a suspect accused in a possible hate crime assault on a Queens subway train. Investigators are looking for this woman. They say she kicked a 28 year old woman in the face on a seven line train yesterday morning. It happened near the 69th Street Roosevelt Avenue station. Police say she used racial slurs toward the woman who suffered a mild concussion. Search crews were back in the East River today, desperately trying to find a 13 year old boy. Drones and a boat were used in the search this afternoon. The boy went into the water near East 6th Street yesterday around 4 p.m. There's still no word how he ended up in the river, but no criminality is suspected. Still ahead at 11, sorting out fact from fiction online. What's driving the growing misinformation on social media surrounding the Israel Hamas war and what's being done about it? Plus, Tesla recalling thousands of one of its most popular cars. What you need to know about the potential safety risk. And a spectacular sight above Central Park tonight the drone show that lit up the skyline. Steve Overmeyer is here with a look at sports. Steve. Hey, Jessica. So, for the first time in nearly a decade, Rutgers football has reached six wins and have become bowl eligible. This is how the team celebrated in the locker room after the game. Hear the coach's inspirational postgame comments later in sports.